What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the altar again, and this time we got round three with a pair of Scar Symmetry. Thank you so much for coming back on the show, man. Great to have you here. Thanks, man. Good, good to see you again. Yep, good to talk again. This time, not in a loud convention center like a Nam. This time, there's actually a little bit of quiet here today. Yeah. Yep. But it's so awesome to have you here. Uh, your new album, we're so excited to finally have it. We're finally getting the Singularity Phase 2. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, you know, I've had the privilege of hearing the album early. But for people who haven't heard uh, the full album yet, do you feel that the first two singles that we got off of uh, the Singularity Phase 2 is a good representation of this whole album in a way? Or is that just one little taste of what's to come on the Singularity Phase 2? Uh... I think it's a pretty good representation <clears throat> and it's a it's a good representation of what I wanted to do musically with phase two because Chrononautilus the second single is the opening track and it starts starts off really brutal uh, and we haven't had a lot of songs like that in our discography so far like that that kind of uh, fast blast beating it, it's we've only had like a couple of tracks in the past and 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 on this album it's actually quite a lot more of that so so it felt good to have one of the singles uh, having that because there are certainly songs on the album that uh, are a little bit more conventional square symmetry so and it feels like if we would have picked them as the singles we wouldn't have showed them the true darkness of phase two. <laughs> well, you know, as a huge fan of Scar Symmetry, and, you know, I couldn't be more excited about this. This is one of my personally most anticipated releases of this year. But do you feel that people who may just be discovering S Scar Symmetry now, maybe through these singles, should they maybe go back and listen to the Singularity Phase 1 uh, in order to get the concept of Singularity Phase 2? Is it meant to be listened to chronologically, like almost a movie series in a way? No, <laughs> no. I think I think you can you can drop in at any time, and I think that's that's kind of interesting. I mean, we've been been around for for a long time. Actually, next year is going to be the twentieth anniversary of the band yeah. getting together. Uh, uh, so it's it's kind of interesting, and and we've done we've done like uh, we had our vocalist change after our third album, uh, which at the time felt like felt a bit like a divider for for people you know as as always when a, an, an important part of your sound changes like this uh but but it's like now when we this is our uh, seventh album and when i'm uh, when i'm watching comment sections i i see people you know who are like oh i discovered them during that era or, or for, for that album and they and they have that one as their favorite and you know and, and i find that kind of interesting and 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 hopefully now that we're getting back and have a new album hopefully we will pick up some new fans here oh. and then they can go back and discover what we did in the past i think there i think what i love about scar symmetry is that every single album has something to be discovered and all has i feel like scar symmetry has the best of both worlds where you have a sound that people know you by because whether you know i feel like people can listen to uh symmetric and design and appreciate pitch black progress holographic universe and now but you could also tell what would be off of each album in a way does the making of an album whether it will be conceptually or musically start off with a preconceived vision in a way or does it almost kind of like uh is it a very improvisational process where you almost kind of like let the instrument sort of guide you in a way? For the trilogy, for the first phases, and it's going to be for the for this third phase. It's it's the first time where we where we had a synopsis written for for like what the lyrical content was going to be about. So for the trilogy, even before writing the first uh, note of Neo Humanity. Uh, I sort of had a uh, a picture of what I wanted the the music to be like. That I wanted for the first 
face to be very very melodic and progressive and lean towards that side of what we do and and then have face to be, be more brutal and death metal-y mm -hmm. and and go more in a, that direction so that that was the first time we had that and before that i think we never really had so much of like the, the, any idea for what the lyrics was gonna be about um maybe some some sort of loose idea of what the music was going to be like the, the, the very first album was just that was just like a, a test of working together and and the songs are kind of playing it safe in in certain aspects it's it's the song structures are simpler than than we have used later on and then when we started working for uh, on pitch black progress we we knew that we wanted to be more elaborate with the songwriting and we knew we wanted to go for a more produced sound and 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 that kind of thing hit its peak with like production wise with holographic universe verse where the idea was to make it very polished and slick and and almost pop like <laughs> in certain aspects so yeah well I think to have like your sort of part one, part two aspect, like I think it's interesting because like, for example, um, you know, one of my favorite songs, I love the Ghost Prototype songs off of a holographic universe. But like when you listen to Ghost Prototype 1, Measurement of Thought, and then you do Ghost Prototype 2, which is Deuce Ex Machina, which starts off almost as kind of like a ballad in a way. Like that is yeah. a very emotional, goosebump inducing ballad. But, you know, Ghost Prototype 1 goes right into it. So like... um. Why do you feel like all these concepts, why do you feel like the style of music, the sort of very heavy, but also very progressive and ambient style of scar symmetry, why do you feel like they were always the sort of best musical style to address these different stories? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, as for myself, I mean, I wrote those two songs. Uh, and for myself, like what I want to do is I want to write music. I, I sort of want to write the music that I would want to listen to. I, I feel like there's, there's my, it's, it's like, a, among all the music that's out there, uh, there's something probably that I feel like I'm missing. I'm, I'm listening to like favorite bands of mine, uh, might be listened to like Symphony X is a favorite band of mine. I love them. Uh, they don't have a lot of like really death metal stuff, and like uh, Russell Allen has a really nice like harsh voice, but it's never like actual growling. So I, I listen to their music, and I'm like, hmm, I could I could see definitely see like uh, some some proper death metal like alongside this, and then. So 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 when I write my music, I have like ah oh, I dig this that they are doing, and I like the like typical death metal stuff and and I like like fusion music and then oh I I like I like Hans Zimmer and what he does for some movie scores. Mm. So for me I, I I try to put the things together that I like in the in the kind of order that I would prefer them instead of what other people prefer. Yeah. And uh, I I've always yeah. said if we were gonna take progressive metal bands and we're gonna like make them into like a school cliques in a way, I've always said like Dream Theater or Pink Floyd would be like the hippies. Scar Symmetry would be the science whizzes because with songs like Trapezoid and Mind Machine and Artificial Sun Projection, I feel like your music is rooted in both art, science, and philosophy. But with the concepts that are addressed, whether it would be in the Singularity or any album, is your personal life or your personal experiences at all a subject matter that's explored in Scar Symmetry? Or is this more of just an escapism where you don't really bring too much of your own personal experience into it? Um, I don't know. Um, for, for me, like music is such a, such a world of its own and it can like carry its own feelings in a way. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not like when I write music, I'm not really connecting it to anything that's happening. It's like if I'm sad, I'm I don't necessarily write minor chord mm -hmm. progressions. Like I don't I don't do it like that. For for me, it's like I 
I work, I do my best work when I'm happy. You know, when I'm, when I'm uh, feeling my best, I, I slept good and I had a nice meal and I spent time with my family and, that, and then I'm off to, to work for a few, few hours and I feel really good. That's when I do my best work, so. Uh, and then the, the, the music can turn out to be happy or brutal or sad or uh, any kind of other emotional flavor. <laughs> but it's not so much connected maybe to my to my own uh, emotional experience. That's so not metal, writing music when you're happy. That makes you stand out compared to every uh, musician I think I've interviewed in death metal, black metal, doom metal, you name it. I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the the concept that of like you having to feel exactly... I mean, I, I guess that... I'm sure that a lot of people are f feeling exactly what you're saying, but I also think that maybe you know it, for, for certain kinds of music it's 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 might be almost like what you have to say you know like uh like i i, I went to the graveyard and i've uh, i've carved uh, an ups, upside down inverted cross on my on my skin and then i wrote this album yeah <laughs> and then i and i, I sacrificed unborn uh, babies yeah, I mean, you know I, what I mean. All all the darkness can get a little repetitive, and I think that may that hey, you being maybe one of the happiest musicians in Sweden, or maybe like being one of the happier bands, that makes you more punk rock than anybody because you stand out from the rest. Well, maybe, yeah. but but also I've I I've toured with, and I know like people who are playing in in bands that are more dark mm -hmm. in their image and um, I mean when you when you get off uh, stage when you get into to, to the tour bus and so people teddy bears. are putting on music it's like yeah and it's like uh, they want to listen to I don't know uh, 80s pop music or something and like super cheese and stuff and everyone's everyone yeah everyone's a teddy bear and and there's like there's no darkness and inverted crosses but uh, but once they go into doing an interview it's like you know oh yeah yep they have to change yeah. it like that yeah well, when i write my black metal I, I want to have like a little bowl of potpourri and i'm <laughs> and i'm having a nice cup of tea and hey listen you see the satanic altar in the background and one of my favorite albums of all time is flyleaf and they're uh they're a christian band so i think in the end it's all uh, it's while well, i think it's more than an image in a way sometimes there is you can't always be the image all the time. Otherwise you become a yeah. victim of your own product, as I call it. Um, now, Indeed. Now, being that Scar Symmetry has such an emphasis on both clean and heavy singing, but by no means is Scar Symmetry a metalcore band at all. But I was wondering if, like, instrumentally, you have to, like, adjust to fit the vocal style. Because, like, when I listen to, like, the verse in a song like Mind Machine, for example, it almost seems like uh, the guitar tone, it's both very magical, but it also has its own rhythmic elements. And then with a track like uh, Morphogenesis, for example, the you know when you have that very aggressive verse and then that very epic chorus, it almost seems like the instrumentals stand out in their own way at all. Do you like adjust the technique depending on the vocal style? <clears throat> I mean, I, I most often write the guitar parts first uh, so I, I come up with the instrumental parts first. That's typically what I do, and uh, and and I often have, I often have in mind what kind of vocal style is gonna be on top of it, uh, because naturally, like a lot of the, the the riffs that are more death metal style, is gonna fit better with the death metal kind of vocals, and and once you have more like chords and, and stuff, it's. Uh, makes it nicer to, to write melodies on top of, so... But I also try to mix it up a, a little bit, you know, to, to uh, not make it kind of too samey. Uh, but the, the guitars pretty much always come first, and, and, and I, I try to... I try to set things up that... that I... that I write guitar parts that I... that it's gonna be possible to write interesting uh, vocal parts on top of, uh, and sometimes it, like if if the guitar part is too busy, if it's something where 
you're just ha- playing notes all over the place, then like there's not not gonna be uh, much space left for for vocals. So, but I I really I really love having uh, both harsh and melodic vocals uh, when when I write because it's it keeps everything so open because like at 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 any time you know I, I can I can just go in in any di- direction there's like it it seems like limitless in a way and and sometimes I can decide to mix harsh and clean and sometimes I have the clean vocals but I have like three or four harmony parts and yeah I, and I feel like there's almost like no limits to what scar symmetry is and I've heard bands say that too with like very experimental styles but really I do think that scar symmetry can incorporate anything because with the different vocal styles and with your guitar technique that's incorporated in there and being that in between these uh, two singularity albums you were playing with Meshuga for a, a long period of time which I know is a very rhythmic oriented band as well so did that maybe open up new ideas for techniques to bring into scar symmetry as well? Uh, well, I'm 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 getting asked that question a lot since I'm doing interviews all day <laughs> these days, um, and people are asking like if the Meshuga gig like influenced the new album, uh, but Phase Two was written before I I joined Meshuga actually. Oh, wow. so the album was written in 2016, and I I started playing with them in 17. Wow. So yeah, so the the, the songs are kind of old and. And like, I was a Meshuga fan from '94. I saw them the first time. I didn't know who they were. They played in my town. We went and saw them, and and we got, we got absolutely, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I dr- Fuck, <laughs> fucked over by how awesome they were. Yeah, and I and I was drinking with them the night before I first interviewed you at Nam, and uh, that was. Uh, yeah, they make uh, they made the guys from Pantera look like a gospel choir. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I've, I've been, I was a fan, a long time fan of theirs, and and the stuff that they did, uh, like uh, back in the nineties, the non EP and and destroy your race approved. That's where I uh, started listening to them, and and back then they were one of my absolute favorite bands, and they were just like exactly what I needed in my life at that time. The the way they, the way they blended, like. Uh, kind of Pantera style music but with polymeters, polyrhythms and fusion influences and for me that was just like absolutely mind boggling. So what they did back then has been just uh, just like everything else, uh, every other music that I've loved throughout the years, it's it's sort of become part of who I am and my vocabulary. So it's, it's a part of my uh, songwriting toolbox those kinds of sounds and grooves and so so on on every Scorsimeter album there's there's like a couple of riffs that that I know that I could like backtrack them to the Meshuggah influence back in the day and uh, and also also because their style is so specific that if you do something similar to what they do even if others do it as well it's just gonna sound like them Uh, but now having having been in the band and touring and playing all this amazing music now now going forward i'm I'm currently just gonna go into a new writing period to to write new music for score symmetry and and now i'm i'm feeling like the meshuga thing i love the music and i love the people and i i love having the gig and it's like it's all uh like an, it was an amazing experience for me, but it also at this point it's all almost seems like an ant, anti-inspiration. Hmm. Like it, uh, you don't want to take like, your heroes. To, you don't want to like uh, quote unquote rip off your heroes in a way. Yeah, it, it feels like if if I put out like the next album and and if there are like hints of Meshuggah on it. Uh, it just feels like it, it would feel weird and and I said this in in a different interview that it it would feel like if I would carry a photo of my ex-girlfriend in my 
<laughs> wallet, you know, or something like that. Like I'm, like, like I'm holding on to something that's not there anymore, or or something. I don't know. That's a I great mean, analogy. I love the show, I, I love the show guys, it, and it might also be the case that I now I I play those kinds of riffs uh, for several years, and uh, and and I just. Just like with Scar Symmetry, that anytime we start working on a new album, it's gonna be a reaction to the uh, the, the last one. We we either gonna take what we did and take it further, or we just not gonna go in that direction at all. Fair enough. Fair you know, enough. So to, yeah, I mean, whenever I listen to anything off of Holographic Universe, I'm not hearing Future Breed Machine like at all. But like, I still think that you know the the I could tell that you have the tech. I feel like you have the technical excellence where you could play. I mean, I feel like you you demonstrated you could play that uh, those Mashuga riffs that I think are very different from Scar Symmetry. I think you kind of the ability to be able to play both. I think is a truly a remarkable accomplishment. And uh, mm -hmm. the final question I wanted to ask you is, you kind of mentioned it before, but next year is going to mark 20 years of Scar Symmetry since we first heard the Seeds of Rebellion demo back in the day. So can we be expecting some sort of celebration for Scar Symmetry in any way, whether it would be playing Symmetric and Design in, it, in full or maybe playing, I would love to hear the whole catalog live in, in its entirety if you have time to do that for one concert. Uh yeah I, I don't know about next year because next year is going to be the uh, anniversary of of the band getting together and, and starting recording mm -hmm. and it's it's not until 25 that we have the 20th anniversary of symmetric and design and i feel like that album is not that's like our least uh, popular album it's uh some i'm not sure it, it would even make sense to go out and tour on it and those songs they seem so old but uh, but in in 26 and now it's like three years but three years go fast and that will be the, the anniversary for pitch black progress and that's that's a cool album we played a lot of those songs live and they so it, it's uh, entirely possible that in 26 we will have it okay okay some pitch black progress touring like that's that's something i'm i'm thinking of yeah, it could but be really cool. We gotta get some deep cuts. I'd love to hear Chaos Weaver or Hybrid Cult or uh, Veil of Illusions, maybe live or something like that. Sure. I mean, we've we've stopped playing Symmetric in the Science songs now for for some time, uh, and nowadays we we're not even playing a lot of Pitch Black uh, songs either. Kind of sort of saving ourselves a little bit for for the anniversary, kind of letting those songs rest. We've been picking up songs from Holographic Universe that we haven't played before. Like we're doing Ghost Prototype 1 now. Uh, we're doing um, Quantum Leaper. Uh, I think we might start doing Prism and Gate again. So yeah, so we're, we're trying to mix things up. It's like Chaos We were we played that song for such a long time. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I can't remember if you played it when I saw you at Gramercy Theater back in uh, twenty sixteen. But uh, Mind Machine, you do you play that at every show or? Uh, we used to. We used to. That was like a, a set list regular. Okay, because uh, th I think that's one of the best guitar solos of all time. So we just we got to get that at every oh, cool. show. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it'll, it'll, it'll return at some point. We'll bring it back. Okay, please. But Vera, thank you so much for coming back onto the show. Really appreciate it, everybody. We are here with a pair of Scar Symmetry, the Singularity Phase 2 Xenotaph. Be sure to pick that up. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>